Hi, welcome to our first podcast, Siona Pearl interviewing or speaking with Jacob regarding his book, 623 PM, Marriage Supper of the Lamb. We're going to start a whole series of Bible study, book study, podcasts here on YouTube. This is the first of many. I am looking forward to hearing what he has to say. Here we go. Today, we're going to have a Bible study. We're going to talk about the Pyramid of Giza and how that it's a sign, a great wonder on the earth that the Lord uh, had built. He might have even built it himself, laid the foundations, because he asked Job, he goes, where were you when I laid the uh, foundations to the rock? So it's yeah. po possible that Enoch built it using the wisdom of God. That's one of the questions I'm going to ask the Lord who built it. He probably said he did. Yeah. <laughs> it's our DNA. It's our consciousness. Understanding shapes. God reveals himself in shapes. He uses uh, circles and pyramids and rectangles and squares and cubes. Right triangles. All kinds of <laughs> right triangles. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And the Bible says the same thing as the... Uh, Giza, and Giza says the same thing as New Jerusalem. New Jerusalem says the same thing as the Bible, same thing as DNA, same thing as Stonehenge. And today we're going to talk about, most importantly, the chief cornerstone, which Jesus says he was the chief cornerstone, which the builders rejected, and they're trying to take over. And they're going to allow it to be, have power for a time and a season until Jesus comes back. And then he wipes them out. So the people who are in charge of this world, they think that they're, they're going to defeat Jesus. But clearly they're so deceived because Satan is so deceived that he thinks that he's going to defeat Jesus. But he's got another thing coming. Yeah, he, he does. He will be defeated <laughs> again. Or cast into the lake of fire in the end. So getting back to the chief cornerstone. Jesus was conceived, born, named, baptized, hailed as king, and died all at 3.01 p.m. Jerusalem time zone. And the height of the chief cornerstone is approximately 103 inches it's approximately uh, exactly 102.857 so you see that it can be both 102 inches or 103 inches and this 103 301 is the special number that jesus chose to bring forth his wisdom to humanity that's why he was the 13th of the 12 when he came on the scene so the very structure of his disciples and himself revealed that he was the 13th and he was born on the 31st day on Moses' calendar as well. Wow. So now, in looking at the dimensions here, and we're going to have it on the screen for everybody, you can see that, well, let's just read them out. The slant edge height is 154 inches. The base side is 162 inches. The slant height on the side of the face of the pyramid is 14.5 spans and span is used in the bible it's a biblical measurement one span is nine inches uh and the height is approximately 102 inches and i'm using 102 for this demonstration because this we're going to talk about how it brings forth the wisdom of the birth of the man child so you got all these dimensions 154, 162, 102, and 145. And we also have the slant edge angle, which is 51.4 degrees. So the very slant edge angle, once again, hides the 514 and this 154. And the 154 is special because there was 153 fish caught and Jesus had one fish. So this 154, this is the value of Israel in Hebrew, 541. Israel became a nation on May 14th, that's a jaw dropper. That is a jaw dropper. 
That is that's an... one of my favorite revelations, I think, because unfortunately, people that have an issue with seeing wisdom of understanding in in, in the very sp- structure of the word, the very you know the word is spirit. Um, they can't see the glory of God. They, they're stuck, and so it's so cool to see how yes, the Lord is revealing wisdom through the very structure of the words and the numbers, what they mean. You just got to search for it. But getting back to the birth now, once again, we have the numbers 102, 162, the 154, a 145, and a 514. The birth of the man-child occurs at the 201st minute times 62nd, which is 21.6 hours of the day, which is 1.45% of the day from previous Jerusalem sunset. (laughs) <laughs> now, I know that sounds like a lot, a tongue twister, and it sounds like, what the heck? This guy's making all this stuff up, and we're throwing numbers together. No, it's very, 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 very specific, and it's perfect wisdom. It just sounds weird to people because it's so many numbers, and you're like, no way, this could be all these numbers. You're just saying whatever. No, it's God's wisdom, and this is how God's wisdom is. It's unbelievable that he's this. I mean, if all of our hairs are numbered, then certainly all of this is numbered as well. So the birth of the man-child is 640 universal time zone. The height of Giza with capstone is 640 spans. We have 64 codons and 46 chromosomes. And I got one, a thought for people to think about. If man and woman were created on the sixth day in the image and God rested on the seventh day. What did he do on the eighth day? And it says that he breathed life into Adam. So therefore, Adam was created on the eighth day. And Jesus is the last Adam. And eight times eight is 64. And it's just that that's the simplistic way of breaking it down. The reason why he held uh, 64 in such high regard, because... Eight is new beginnings. So new beginnings, new beginnings. And the inverse of eight is uh, 0.0125. And that's the birth of Jesus, 15.02 hours of the day, which that is the divine equation, square root of five plus or minus one divided by two. Mm Mm-hmm, right. Wow. It's truly just amazing. You know, having the graphic is helping a lot to see, you know, refer back to this and that and to be able to see the cornerstone dimensions and the hours of the day. And, you know, it's just unbelievable. It is unbelievable, but it's believable, you know, when you're aware and know that this is how such a specific way of communicating, you know. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, and this is just one way of thousands of ways saying the same thing. Right. We could look at the, I'd like to move to uh, the acute heptagram 7-3, and I'll send you a picture of it. Okay. I'll put it up. Yeah, and the acute acute heptagram 7-3 is the seven eyes with seven horns. Uh, And and that, that is a geometric shape. And that hides the birth of the man-child as well. All these wonderful angles, the number of total degrees in the eyes, the total number of degrees of the whole thing, it all says the same thing. And let me give you an example. So in this shape, you have an angle 51.4 degrees, you have another angle 77.14 degrees, um, you have this number 1260 and degrees total of the seven horns or the seven eyes. I mean, the total of the seven eyes is 1260 and you have the total of the thing, 4,680 degrees. Now I say all those numbers and it has seven eyes and seven horns. Mm-hmm. So I say all those numbers and get this, the birth of the man child is of the day, which is the 1260th second, which is the 1.4% of the day, 
which is 14.5% uh, of the day, which is 86.0% from the end of the day. <laughs> I just I just deciphered and decoded the seven horns and seven eyes for humanity. I hope you're blessed. I would say so. It's unbelievable. That's just an amazing finding, revelation, uncovering. And where where does it mention, like, where does it talk about the seven horns and the seven eyes in the Bible? Uh, that's uh, Revelation 5-6. Uh, and behold, lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain. Mm -hmm having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. <laughs> so these seven spirits, these seven eyes, it's time. The angles hide time, a <laughs> very specific time. Right, right. Yeah. Four degrees is in the, in the, is an angle in the eye. And the birth of the man child is 1.45% of the day, which is the 1260th second. <laughs> See, the reason why the birth of the man child, people can grab this one, is 1260 promises in the day. You know, this 1260 is very prevalent in the Bible. It is. And yeah. the birth of the man child is on the 1260th second. <laughs> so it goes from just greater to more specific. This is obviously the birth of man child. 1260 second the, the diameter of the moon is 2160 miles and the value for palmoni who's that wonderful numberer is 216 so we see that the numberer himself chose the 216 which is six times six times six which is a beautiful wisdom number 666 is a beautiful wisdom number that the lord jesus uses to convey great wisdom and unfortunately, the devil has perverted that number and, and turned it into a negative. But it's actually a beautiful wisdom number. All these wisdom number, all these numbers are beautiful wisdom numbers. And that's the answer to six 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 is the answer to it's a number of a man. Number of man. Well, every person in this world is walking around with two tetrahedra, counter rotating tetrahedra. And it's called a star tetrahedron. It's our thought light vehicle. It's our morning star. It's the day star arising in our hearts and our minds trying to understand it's arising in the hearts of God's children. It's his marvelous works. It's the throne of God. So the throne God. of God is within us. The throne of God is within yeah. us. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. You know, people, is there a, you know, I've said before that, you know, the throne of, is Jesus sitting on the throne in New Jerusalem? I don't know. God can do whatever he wants, but it's just more of a spiritual aspect of the throne Christ in us, the hope of glory. You see, this is the great mystery that Paul spoke of, is that Christ in us, the hope of glory, so that we can see him face to face. And learning about his life. See, the testimony, the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. And so the life of Christ, everything he did, is for an example for the end times days minutes hours seconds and the wisdom of God is everlasting and it's so unbelievable all these wonderful ways that he's conveying all these beautiful wisdom numbers the reason why Jesus chose 623 p.m. six water pots two or three firkins 623 p.m. is the marriage supper of the lamb it's also the time that we get changed in a moment and in twinkling of an eye. The reason why he used that was because it's part of the first perfect number, six. And six equals three plus two plus one. Okay? Right. And so we see that in wisdom because the first thing that he had spoke was Genesis 1-1 one, one, and there's 28 letters Hebrew letters in that verse, and we know that 28 is the second perfect number. So it's like he shouts forth the very thing he wants to convey to humanity is perfect number. 
it can it uses the second perfect number for us to figure out that the answer is hidden in the first perfect number and also complementary to the phi ratio the divine number because 623 p.m. is 18.36 hours of the day and that's where Jesus was latitude was 31.68 north latitude that's the value of lord jesus christ 3168 in greek so it's a combination of perfect number and perfect wisdom of the phi ratio expressing beauty and also it's one of the first numbers that's birthed out of the the second pisces with radius one which when you draw in the two lines you can draw in your your four little uh, right triangles in there and the perimeter of that right triangle is approximately 2.36. So we see the under, unbelievable wisdom in that. And we see that the perimeter of a second Pisces with radius 1 is 4.18. And the birth of the man-child is 1840. Military time. Universal time zone. And the Viseca Pisces is shaped like a womb. The birth, you see the actual, you know, the birthing forth of wisdom. So the, 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 the Viseca Pisces was known as the fish bladder. And so it hides the birth of the man child. And that, it hides everything. It's, the Lord is amazing. It doesn't stop. It's truly amazing. I mean, it doesn't stop. I feel like we, we can talk for um, hours and hours and days and days and, you know, I think that's uh, something that we'll have a chance to do, you know, um, when we see everybody else in heaven, you know, I bet you have questions that you've thought about that you want to ask Jesus. And I bet there's people out there listening that are going to have questions for you. <laughs> so we'll have to keep doing these. Okay, sounds good. Let's, uh, let's Let's just take a break, and uh, we'll look forward to doing something again next time. Okay, sounds great. Thanks, Jacob. Okay.